Hey folks, thanks for tuning in and looking at some solutions for your homework. Uh, we're going over these in class, but if you're absent or if I go over them too fast or I don't make them clear in class, maybe this video will help you out. You can watch it again. Um, <clears throat> right. So some notation to talk about Y prime. That's how you read this. Y prime means the derivative of the Y function over here. If you see F of X and you could say F prime, right? So we'd write that one as F prime of X. This notation right here means take the derivative of this stuff right in here. Well, the directions say on page 105 that it says find the equation for the derivative. So this is a bit repetitive, right? It's repeating the directions. Um, so hopefully that's not too confusing, but I just want to make the notation clear. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> How do we do the derivative? Well, we've got a function 3x inside another function, the sine function. So this one is the outside function, and this one is the inside function. And there are maybe two ways of doing the chain rule. You could start on the inside function and take its derivative, then multiply that by the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside function alone. Or you could just do the reverse of that, take the, der take the derivative of the outside function first, and I think I'll do it that way right now. So I'm going to just put down the negative six. The factor in front is not a function by itself. It's just a constant factor. So we can ignore that constant factor and then multiply it by the derivative. It's just going to increase the slopes by six times the amount, and it'll take the opposite sign, right? So because it's reflecting the function, you know, over the axis and it's vertically stretching it six times the amount. So Hopefully um, I'm making that clear that <clears throat> it's just going to increase the slopes. If you want to use the word increase, I'm hesitant to use that with a negative, but that's really what it's doing. It's, it's magnifying the slope six times the amount. All right. Um, so here we go. Outside functions derivative would be the cosine function, right? The, the derivative of sine is cosine. Now I rewrite the inside function and don't do anything to it. Like just pretend like it was just a plain X in here. If I was taking the, the sine X, it would be cosine of x, but there's not an x in there. It's a 3x. So stick down the 3x. Now, I'm going to take all of that times the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of the inside function is 3. And I mentioned this a few times that putting the 3 after the cosine function, you know, it requires us to have these parentheses here. So the safer thing to do is to put the 3 out front of the function. And then I think I would multiply it by the by the negative six. So I'm going to write it as three cosine three X. And then I'm going to take the six and I'm going to multiply it by the three. You know, this kind of messes with people a little bit like, wait, why don't you take the six times the cosine also? Well, they're just three numbers multiplied together. There's a six, there's a three, and then there's a cosine over here. Now we, we can't tell what the cosine is for a number. Uh, because we don't know what X is, but it is just a number. The cosine of whatever we get here would just be a number between negative one and one, right? Those are the, that's the range of the cosine function. So anyways, negative six times three is negative 18. So I get negative 18 and then cosine of three X. All right. So that's how the chain rule works. Um, it's normal to get a little, uh, how should I say nervous about the simplification or how, how do I write it? Uh, because we're worried about so many different things, you know, like what are all these rules that we're learning about for derivatives? And then our, you know, kind of some basic arithmetic skills get a little nervous. It's almost like when you're texting a friend on your phone, right? The words just fly out your thumbs as you're texting away because the phone picks up some of the errors that you make. And then even if there is a small error, your friend's probably going to know what you're talking about. But then when you go and you try to write like a letter, or something like that in pen on a piece of paper. Sometimes we get a little nervous, man, am I spelling all the words right? I don't want to look like a goofball, you know? So I think that's what's going on here is that we get a little nervous with some of the arithmetic and simplification. All right. Okay. So here we go. Let's, let's uh, just rewrite this. Okay. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to X. That's the way we read this. And with respect to X just means that the, in, uh, the independent variable in here is an X and at this point in the game, that's the only variable over here, <laughs> over here. So it's kind of silly to put dx down there, but it's just part of the notation. All right. Um, 
and I don't like where the four is right next to the S. It's the same thing as having the cosine of seven X, all of this stuff to the fourth power. Okay. So now it's maybe a little bit clearer that the four is on the outside. Uh, the cosine is the next inner function and the seven X is all the way on the inside. So to maybe make it a little bit clearer, I'm going to put parentheses around the seven X. So you can see that's the furthest most inside function. All right. So here comes my derivative and it's okay to put equals right now because we're saying take the derivative of this function here. And that's, that's maybe the benefit of having D DX in front of the function is that we can now just put equals two over here, you know, and, and continue forward. Anyways, uh, what was our outermost function on this problem? Outermost function was the sine function, right? So I did the derivative of the sine function first. So I'm going to con uh, continue in that method. I'm going to take the outermost function, take its derivative first. Well, what is the outermost function? It's the four, right? So I'm going to get four times, and then I rewrite everything that's inside the parentheses you know, and don't touch it. Don't do anything to that stuff inside the parentheses. Reduce the power by one. Check mark. Okay, so let, let's put little check marks next to this stuff. I, I dealt with the power rule. I reduced, you know, I moved the four down. I reduced the power by one. That's this information right here, the four and the three, right? Okay, chain rule says multiply. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the next function inside. Let me put a little, little blue check mark over the next function. Okay, I'm going to try to take the derivative of the cosine function right now. And what happens there? Well, that's the negative sine, and then I leave the inner function alone, 7x. Check mark. I took care of the cosine function. All right, well, I, I don't have another color to use, um, so hopefully you're okay with me putting a little black check mark here. I know I can change all the colors if I hold the mouse on there, but anyways. Uh, so what's the derivative of the seven X? It's just plain seven. So, okay. I've got all three functions. I got the outside function. I got the middle function and now I've got the, the innermost function. And now it's just a matter of simplifying kind of collecting factors that would easily simplify like the seven, the negative one and the four. Now you gotta be careful when you pull numbers like to the very front, distribute them out. You gotta make sure that they're not raised to a power. Like I don't see a power on this thing. So it's okay if I take the negative one and move it out there. So seven times negative one is negative seven times four is negative 28. So I've got a negative 28 and then I've got, uh, well, I'm gonna put the three, the power back on the S because it just reduces the number of parentheses I need, right? And then I've got a uh, sine of seven X. All right. So this is how we do the chain rule. I'm going to do one more with you. Let's do number 15. So unfortunately, you know, they don't have derivative in front of this. So what I can, what I can do is I can put F prime of X down and then, uh, oh, shoot. I'd really like to imagine that five thirds outside the sign of four X function. So let's, let's do that right now. I'm going to scratch the five thirds off here and I'm going to put it up here. Okay. That just makes it a little bit clear that the five thirds is on the outside. The sine is the middle function and the four X is the innermost function. Okay. And the 24 is just a factor that's going to ride along. So I'm going to put the, the 24 down and then I'm going to move the five thirds out front and I just leave the inner function alone, the sine of four X. And then I reduce the power by one. So when I take one away from five thirds, so let's, let's just write that arithmetic right up here. Five thirds minus three thirds is two thirds. That's where the two thirds is coming from right there. So I, I move the power down out front and I reduce the power by one. All right, here comes the next one times, I guess I could just probably put a parenthesis here, <clears throat> the cosine, because the derivative of the sine function is cosine, leave the inner function alone, four X. Now it's gonna be times a four. So why do I have three things over here? Well, because there were three functions. There's the power function, there's the uh, trigonometric function, and then there's the linear function all the way on the inside. So I just use the power rule here. I use the power rule there and I use the trig uh, rule uh, for sine right there. All right, let's do some collecting. Uh, let's see. Ooh, look at this uh, two thirds power. Where is the two thirds power? Did I put the parentheses in the right place? Yes, I did. See, see how the, the two thirds power is around the sine function. So it's the sine of four X being raised to the two thirds power. So the five thirds, it's okay that I, that I take the four and the five thirds, multiply those two together. 
and multiply those by 24, or maybe better yet, multiply five thirds by 24, because three will go into 24 eight times, eight times five is 40, and then I've got 40 times four is 160. So I think I've got 160, and then I've got the uh, sine to the two thirds power, that's a sine of four X to the two thirds power. And then I've got the cosine of four X. Hey, uh, some of that simplification, I acknowledge, can be tricky. So when you check the answer in the back of the book or online, uh, you might not see exactly the way that you wrote it, and that can make you nervous. Um, I hope you're doing okay with the chain rule. I'm here to help you out. I want you to be successful. I know you can do it. You're doing fantastic. Don't beat yourself up if this is a little bit of a struggle.